What's up, YouTube? Um, you can see, change the background, we just uh, remove the background, uh, and just go see how this works. I don't know, just making me bigger. But um, what I want to do is like a, a few a few videos, um, because I think of focus coming out. If you saw a tweet by Mister uh, Mister GM, he thinks that um, augmentation or the patch is going to drop around eleventh eleventh of July, so pretty much a month from now. Uh, so really about like three weeks, three 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 ish weeks, or a month until the release. Um, and there was a uh, a dev interview from Bowser, the healer, and also Preheat about augmentation, and um, which were really good insight on how augmentation evoker came about. And um, I just wanted to give, I guess, this video will be about like my my cons about uh, augmentation evoker, and then I'll do a video about the pros about augmentation evoker again this is and these views are going to be coming from i guess my point of view and how i believe i'm going to be playing the spec rather than how i perceive other people might play the spec other people will definitely look at the spec and be like oh it's something new um and they're going to try it out and they, they might want to play it and, and main it but um i give i guess my insights of the spec and maybe it will help the others that are looking to play um, augmentation or main augmentation evoker a little bit more insight of the actual class itself and if you do want to main it or don't want to main it <clears throat> the augmentation evoker the cons the first thing probably is a good thing for me and i'll explain the good thing for me um, as a raid leader raid caller raid, raid everything or however you want to say it it's a good thing for me but in terms of other people um other uh, like specific dps uh, specs the rotation is very streamlined very very streamlined and I'd say it's very possibly boring compared to other DPS specs just remember this isn't uh, a pure DPS spec it is a support DPS spec so you could probably see why but in terms of a pure we're talking about from a damage perspective it is not that great it's um kind of boring yes um it's probably like any other dps you you, you press your buttons you do damage um but of course your damage is going to be exponentially lower than other people's damage you can see other people's damage on the meters be higher because you're buffing them um but the in terms of rotation rotation from a damage perspective damage perspective is you're going to be pressing your ebon mine pull down and then you're going to be pressing your upheaval and you're going to be pressing your fire breath and every two minutes or so you're going to be pressing your breath of eons and then you're going to be spamming eruption this is that's from a pure dps perspective and then your fillers are you going to be pressing your living flame if you're on the move you can press azure strike and then you're just pressing eruption when you have your essences and then your fillers, pressing your living flame, and then Evan Might when it comes back up, upheaval, fire breath, living flame, eruption. All button spec. All button spec from a DPS perspective. Again, again, we're talking about from a DPS perspective because there hasn't been a spec like this ever in World of Warcraft. So that's one of the big cons about the spec four button dps spec ebon might because you you press ebon might because that's your big cooldown 
and then you press it um, because Ebon Might also buffs your eruption damage. So you want to keep Ebon Might up and you want to press eruption to do more damage. <clears throat> and you're pressing your upheaval because that's your, your big cooldown or big damage cooldown. And then you have your fire breath, another big, which is the staple of Evoker. And then you have your spender, which is eruption. I'll move uh, eruption over here. And then you have eruption. And that's it from a dps point of view it is very streamlined and very boring and i could probably see um a lot of dps specs look at it and be like after uh, after they play for a, a long time they'll probably be like oh it's kind of kind of meh yeah I, I won't enjoy it as much <clears throat> yeah the second thing um in terms of another con is uh we'll move to a raid pers uh, no mythic plus perspective and then we'll talk about raid in my mind is that so in a mythic plus perspective and also raid it actually could do both is that it dependent on the players pressing you the buttons all the time so i think yes in a in a mythic plus perspective your ever might's going to go on all the right people because you have only five people and never mind goes on four people and it's it's going to go to the to the right targets every single time and hopefully you can um you have your ebon mind up or uh i think it's like 80 percent of the time and by min maxing that in in a mythic plus perspective with a good group it's going to be insanely good but if you're pugging and your pugs um generally don't press their buttons on cooldown Say you press your breath of eons, um, and you don't track other people's cooldowns. Say your uh, a, a druid's incarn, mages, um, big combustion, uh, the tyrant from warlocks, just any any big cooldown. So you press your breath of eons on your targets. They get ebon might. They're doing damage, but they're not pressing their cooldowns. So what will happen in the end is the end damage of your breath of Eons is not going to be good at all, and you're just wasting it. The thing from a potential lower spectrum of keys and new players to the game, I think Evoker's not going to work really well with them. But when you start pugging into the higher keys and get a little bit more coordinated, or if you have your your own group, it will it will get better. But I uh, but I think if People don't press their buttons. If people don't press their buttons, then it's not going to be great from a from an augmentation perspective because then you're not they're not utilizing your open might buff. They're not utilizing your. Uh, I never can. I'm going to say the crit buff um, with fate mirror. Um, the tank's always going to get hit, so blistering your scales is going to be good for our tank. <clears throat> it's going to help them survive, but. The other people in the group aren't pressing their buttons while you're throwing out your buffs on people, then that will be uh, not great, right? From a raid perspective, you're gonna it's actually gonna be good because you're gonna be able to target two people, so you can uh, target two people within the raid group with your crit buff, and your Ebonite's gonna go on them because with the recent change, Ebonite um, prefers targets with your crit buff your prescience so prescience oh it is actually prescience oh, yeah. yeah okay so uh targets with your prescience will uh be priority for your ebon might so you always have two of them running the so two people will be targeted by ebon might and then two random people closer in proximity to you will get the other two so in a raid perspective it's actually better but um again they're gonna to have to be pressing their buttons. The other two are gonna be pressing their buttons, making sure, and then min maxing for science uh, on different people um, is going to be maybe another big con because not everyone is gonna have damage every 20 seconds, right? Uh, if you're gonna, you're gonna be having your raid frames as a healer raid frame, uh, again, you're gonna, well, in a, in a raid perspective, you're gonna have 20 people in your raid. You're gonna be like, okay, 
if you to min max properly, you'll be like, oh, this person is this person will need uh prescience now. He's going at one one and a half minutes. Uh where's this this arcane wait, what does he have? Arcane uh this arcane mage is about to burst, he needs a prescience, this um warlock is about to start his three minute ramp, boomkin's about to start his three minute ramp. Um like knowing each class, you're going to be able to use a prescience because prescience they have a fifteen percent chance to um, echo that damage. So min maxing prescience in a raid perspective and remembering when people are using their cooldowns is going to be another con because you won't be able to just stick it on. Um, say th whoever this person is, what's his name, Kevin, you're going to be using it on Kevin, and then you're going to be using your damage, and then. Uh, this this sin breaker person, you just put it on him next, and then you keep going, and then you go back to Kevin. You can do it that way, but min maxing prescience on people doing damage at certain spots might get a little bit too hectic. So that's another con. And then also, people in your raid group they might be crying. It's like, why aren't you giving me the damage buff? Like I'm doing damage at this specific specific time. Give it to me. And then you have people, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you're in, there, there could be an, also another um, con, people wanting your buff um, and people complaining. That just, just could be another bad thing about it. Actually, and um, something that we talked about before and actually the biggest last thing that we have to actually talk about, dependent when um, Blizzard fixed the, the combat logs is how much damage is an augmentation evoker actually doing? Will they be able to fix your buffs going to other people and turning that damage into your damage? Because as a um, specialization, and we go here and we're talking about a damage again, you want to see your buffs, you want to see your Breath of Eons damage go to you and not to other people. Because really, your buffs are theirs and they're doing all the damage so if they can fix that and it actually shows that your damage from your buffs from your prescience buff so like the echo damage from prescience um the extra damage from the from inferno's blessing as well is stacked up onto your damage um the blistering scales when it um when your tank gets hit it explodes for damage so 3k damage three and a half k damage does that go to your damage? If they all appear up as your damage, then you'll see your on the damage meters, you'll be happy. You'll be insanely happy. But if they don't fix it, then how do you know how much are you? <laughs> what a good evoker. How much damage are you are you actually giving to the group? Right? So It's pretty much, yeah, hopefully Blizzard can fix those kind of things. But, um, yeah, again, we, we talk about the beginning. Varies from a damage damage perspective, DPS rotation. <clears throat> very, very simple. Very simple. It could sway people away from playing Augmentation Evoker. Um, does your damage from your buffs go on the right people at the right time, at the right... People pressing their buttons when you're giving them your buffs. Uh, from a Mythic Plus perspective and a Raid perspective. And also does your damage from all your buffs that you that you put out actually count towards your damage. Because DPS wanna see wanna be on top of the damage meters, right? And that's all that's all that really matters. That's all that really matters from a DPS perspective is that you are number one. And how, how much does an augmentation evoker actually give out to the group? So they're, they're the biggest cons. Um, I, don't, I don't really, from, from my point of view, I don't really see... Oh, actually, one other, one other one is if you have the spec into Symbiotic Bloom, and um, like Dream of Spring or Prolong Life, this will cut your DPS by I think from what I heard in the augmentation evoker Discord, 
is that it cuts your DPS by like 10% or potentially more, like 10 or more percent, because you're dropping a, uh, like a lot of damage um, in your spec. Like you just drop so much, you have to spec two points out and you have to take one out of this and you go into special paradox, uh, but then you need, you pretty much need uh, two more points and I can't do it because there's a bug on PTR which keeps you in combat because of your ebon mine uh, being passed around. But you lose about 10% um, as well. So you, you also have to think about that, right? You need three points and you have to drop three points, three damage points out of here. You drop one out of uh, Pupil of Alexstrasza um, for, from Mythic Plus, and then like all these are damage. Like you can't drop, drop this, you can't, uh, you could potentially drop this, but then you're losing buffs for your group. This, more damage, more damage, more damage. Oh, you need this. So it's a bit um, icky if you're doing like a 3.5 healer fight for Mythic Plus, I mean, uh, for a raid. But in Mythic Plus, you, I'm pretty sure, yeah, you won't go this way because you're pretty much a damage. Unless you're doing like four DPS, no healer keys, and you have the Paladin tank or a Druid tank, and these just help you off here. <coughs> so, yeah. They're my cons. Um, like I mentioned, I'm going to do another video about pros from my perspective. This is cons about my perspective. But then, then I'll do pros about. From me because I'm actually really excited for augmentation of ogre. This is actually going to help me out, like I mentioned. Because they of the cons, those cons will actually help me from a raid raid leader perspective. Because uh, just again by having a very simplistic rotation, I don't have to think. I just, have to keep, I just have to make sure I keep my ebon buff my, and then I go around, I'm looking at timers, I'm looking at the raid, I'm looking at everything, and just being like, do we have to move here, do we have to move there, um, do your clears, do your soaks, all that kind of stuff, so that's a little bit, I guess, a little bit of an uh, introduction to the pros that I'm going to do next, and I might even do... A reaction kind of video to preheat or Bowser the healers uh, videos because everybody loves um everybody loves react videos. But till then, we log out, we sign off, and I'll catch you guys next time. Also. Uh, if you haven't, uh, follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash AXC or kick.com forward slash AXC, not XTV. I don't know why I can't change it on YouTube. Very weird. I'll catch you then. Peace.